In our growing zone, this is the hottest month of the entire year. It's so hot that our local organic farms shut down their operations completely and take this month off. This hillside in our backyard is where our peppers are growing. We are growing a variety of sweet peppers and hot peppers. When we got the notification that our county was charging rates four times higher than average for the use of municipal water, we weren't that concerned because we've gone without water before. I use several permaculture principles for making our garden water wise. The county restrictions are the result of a 130 year drought across different regions of the Southeast. It's been very dry, very hot, but thankfully this month there has been a lot of rain. The first thing I'll tell you is there is a reason why rainwater has a greater effect in our garden than it would in a garden with typical raised beds. And that's because this garden is constructed using permaculture design. Every berm holds a double or a single row of crops and uphill from each of them is a swale or a ditch which holds water in place at the roots when it rains. What I love about permaculture design principles is it looks at the system as a whole because nature works in dynamic relationships. So when it comes to our family vegetable garden, I'm always thinking of ways for it to perform best as part of a greater ecosystem. I plant heat tolerant varieties because we live in a hot climate. For example, I'm growing F1 dragon hybrids in addition to heirloom cayenne peppers. The nightshade family in general does well in the high heat. That is huge! And cherry tomatoes prove to be heat tolerant, oh, as well as melon varieties, which favor the high humidity. <laughs> Making the best use of natural resources, rainwater harvesting is a big part of how we keep our garden resilient by having a gravity-fed irrigation hose connected to a rain tank adjacent to our house. The other way we make a water-wise garden is to work with the cycles of nature and the grasses that grow here to boost the fertility in our soil. By using this closed loop system, I don't have to go to an outside source to create fertility in our garden. Many people who garden depend on animal manure or fertilizers to add fertility to their garden beds each season. And it's not possible for everyone to be able to haul in tremendous loads of organic matter in order to generate tons of compost and fill their garden beds. There is another way that's a bit simpler than that. Living mulch is the first step and it starts completely cleared of any grasses and I sow a cover crop of white Dutch clover. It's a perennial and it adds nitrogen to our soil. Planting a living mulch and ground cover is one of the main things I do to increase soil fertility and water retention every season. And if I want to completely clear a pathway out, this is the way I do it. Here's our pathways at the beginning before the seeds germinate and you can see the swales and berms more clearly. All the pathways will be filled with water when it rains. This year I decided to plant micro clover just to see what it was like and it formed a beautiful dense matte green carpet that was so soft and lovely to walk on barefoot. The conventional white Dutch clover grows to a height of about 18 inches when it's mature and the girls love playing in it. It comes back reliably every season. The grass and weeds eventually fill back in the living pathways because the system isn't perfect and we have very invasive Bermuda grass. We typically take two to three weeks off every July, and when we come back home, everything in the garden is completely overgrown, except for the vegetable beds, which had been sheet mulched. The grass becomes part of our system too. While it doesn't seem ideal, it actually forms a dense mat once we push it over. And this is a method used in regenerative farming practices with cover crops where they'll let the cover crop grow to keep the soil moist and the soil life healthy and then push it over so that it decomposes in place and forms a thick mulch. Whereas they would plant their crops directly on top of this mulch, mine is in the trench in the swale next to my beds. The grass breaks down, releasing nitrogen and turning more into carbon, allowing us to do trench composting here with organic matter from the kitchen. That thick bed of mulch will decompose slowly over the hot months of the summer. 
and through the winter months, I'll slowly build up the berms again with a garden hoe, digging out the swales using that rich soil. The grass and kitchen scraps formed a beautiful, rich soil, and I love how trench composting doesn't take much thought or effort. Because it composts in place in the garden, it has all of the microorganisms and living bacteria that my garden needs to thrive. This garden soil is high in nutrients from the organic matter, rich in mineral deposits carried down by the water into the swales, and supercharged with nitrogen from the clover. This very simple and effective closed loop system is how I make soil for my garden beds every year. To finish off my beds, I will roll out a sheet of contractor's paper and top it off with two inches of compost so that no weeds will grow. And then I'll plant my crops and the cycle starts all over again. While this may not be a conventional way to garden, it's something that I've been doing year after year, working with the cycles of nature. Following permaculture design principles has a lot to offer us as gardeners as we learn how to work with nature in order to get the results we need to grow food for our families. I hope this video has added to the opportunities that you might be able to find in your own garden, even if you lose access to external resources. Thanks for watching.